Hello everyone, <coughs> Palumbo here. Before we start the video, you're innocent until proven guilty. Video to doing today with regards to the case of Madeleine McCann. <coughs> I'm going to ask the question, how is it possible for an abductor to take Madeleine through the window according to the McCann's, just after Jerry did his check. And the curtains regards to that apartment went from closed to open. Yet Madeline was supposed to have gone. Here you have Kate McCann's Al Guido. And it's the very first question the Portuguese police asked Kate with regards to her Al Guido. Asked on May the 3rd at 2200 hours when she entered the apartment, what she saw and did, where she looked and what she touched, she did not respond. Now ask yourselves, why would be the why would that be the very first question Kate McCann was asked? It would be the very first question because that's the most important question. What did you see when you entered the apartment? What was the outlook of the apartment, Kate? Now, I am going to show you the Find Madeline website. This is the official Madeline McCann website, folks. It goes as follows. Have you seen these people? Do you know who they might be? Two pictures to the right here person we know as Tanaman these two pictures show a man carrying a child away from the family's apartment this sighting was seen by a witness at 2115 on the evening of Thursday May the 3rd based on more recent information the Metropolitan Police now believe this man may represent a guest at the Ocean Club who was carrying his daughter back to their apartment. However, as it's not possible to be certain that these two men are actually the same person, if you have seen this man in the pictures, or suspect who it may be, please contact the Metropolitan Police Operation Grange. So here you have, on the official Madeleine McCann website, Tanaman still being portrayed on the website, even though the Metropolitan Police state it was Julian Tottenham. Now, I've shown you now in previous videos, and they are not my words, in an interview done with Sandra Falgueras, and I'm sorry for going over and over and over and on about it, but the McCanns state the following folks. Now take it in. They state, when asked by Sandra Felgueras, they state that Madeline's abductor almost got caught. And when Sandra Felgueras asked by who, the McCanns replied by Jane. So according to the McCanns, Madeline's abductor was Jane sighting folks. When did Jane see that sighting? Well, according to the official website here, it was at 2115. Which means Madeline was taken 
between the hours of when Jerry and Kate went to the tapas restaurant up until the hours of 9.15 or oh, sorry that could have been the case but you had Jerry McCann going in at 9.05 and he states he seen Madeline in the bed so it couldn't have been between the hours of when Kate went and Jerry went at the restaurant. It was from 9.05 until Kate McCann raised the alarm up until 10 o'clock. But it couldn't have been up till 10 o'clock, could it, folks? If the McCanns are telling you that Jane Tanner almost killed the abductor, it means... That according to the McCanns, Madeline was abducted when Jerry McCann left the apartment and when Jane seen that man. Jerry McCann enters the apartment at 9.05. <clears throat> Jane sees the man at 21.15. So... Between 9.05 and 9.15, like I say, they are not my words, they are words of Jerry McCann and Kate McCann. Madeline's abductor almost got caught by their friend, friend Jane. So those hours are between 9.05 and 9.15. Ten minutes, folks. Ten minutes for Madeline to be abducted. By Jane sighting. No one else, according to the McCann's, Jane sighting. Now, if you don't believe me, it's in an interview with Sandra Felgueras. Their words. The abductor almost got caught by Jane. So there you have it, folks. Jerry McCann goes in at 9.05. He tells the detectives in his following statement that at 9.05 he's seen Madeline in her bed. So she was not abducted at that moment. When he leaves the apartment, he tells the detectives that the curtains were closed, the shutter was closed and the blinds were closed. With a few slats open. Now he wouldn't see those shutters. Or he wouldn't see the shutter or the window open. If the curtains are closed. Because he wouldn't be able to see them. But that's what he tells the detectives. So if he checked them. Then that's the only way he would see them, apart from the curtains. He'd see them, obviously, because he can see them. But behind the curtains, he would not be able to see the shutter or the blinds. But that's what he tells the detectives. So we only, we only got his word. So take that in. Madeline is in a bed. The curtains are closed. The shutters closed and the windows closed when Jerry McCann leaves the apartment. Now, as soon as Jerry McCann leaves the apartment, the abductor strikes, folks. So, the first question you've got to ask is, how did the abductor get in then? If, according to Jerry McCann, the shutter was closed, the window was closed and the curtains were closed when he left the apartment. It means the abductor could only have got in between half eight and up until Jerry's check at 9.05. But the abductor couldn't have got in through the window or the shutter 
because according to Jerry McCann, when he left, they were closed. So they would have had to have come in through the car park door or the patio door that was left unlocked. So Jerry McCann leaves the apartment at 9.05. He sees Madeline in a bed. Shutter closed, window closed, curtains closed. He then talks to Jeremy Wilkins, and as he does so, Jane Tanner walks past and sees this man walking past with a child at 9.15, according to this official Madeleine McCann website. So, Jane Tanner sees the man, and according to the McCanns, and I keep harping on about it, but that is the abductor, folks. So, that abductor has taken Madeline out of the apartment between 9.05 when Jerry left and 9.15 when Jane Tanner seen him. Supposedly. So the next person to go and do the check should have been Kate McCann, according to what we know. But Matthew Oilfield volunteered, supposedly. So Matthew goes at half past nine, folks. Now, Matthew does not know at this moment in time when he does the check that Madeline has gone. Because that's what the McCanns have told us, haven't they? That she had gone. Taken by the person seen by Jane. So, 9.30, Matthew goes to check. So what would you expect Matthew Woolfield to find? If Madeline had gone between 9.05 and 9.15. You would expect him to see open curtains... A raised shutter and an open window. Because that's what the McCanns tell us, that Madeline was taken through that window when she was abducted. So that's what you would expect Matthew Oldfield to see at 9.30. But Matthew Oldfield says no such thing. He goes in at 9.30 and he sees closed curtains, folks. Like Jerry McCann, he cannot see the shutter and he cannot see the window because they are behind the curtains. But the most important thing he tells us, and you'll realise why it's the most important thing he tells us, is that the curtains were closed. So Jerry McCann goes in at 9.05, the curtains are closed, Madeline is in a bed. When Jerry leaves, Madeline is abducted, supposedly, according to the McCanns. Matthew goes in at 9.30. The curtains are still closed, just as Jerry McCann seen them. But Madeline is gone by this time, supposedly. Now here's the crux of the matter, folks. From 9.30 up until 10 o'clock... These curtains that Matthew seen closed at 9.30 suddenly become open at 10 o'clock. But the abductor has already taken Madeline at 9.05, according to the McCants. So how can an abductor take Madeline through the window between 9.05 and 9.10 to be seen by Jane Tanner. And then Matthew goes in at 9.30 to see closed curtains. How can they suddenly go from being closed at 9.30 to being open at 10 o'clock if the abductor took Madeline, according to the McCann's, at 9.15? This proves that this 
official Madeleine McCann website. This proves that this man is not Madeline's abductor, if she was abducted. And it also proves that it's not Smith Man, if she was abducted between the hours of 9.05 and 9.15. Why does it prove that, folks? It's because it's the words of the McCanns themselves, in their own statements. That's why the PJ asked Kate McCann that very first question, Regards El Arguido, what did you see when you entered the apartment? Now, I am going to show you what Kate McCann said she seen when she first entered the apartment. And then you'll realise why I said that Matthew Oldfield seeing the curtains closed at 9.30 was the most important thing Matthew Oldfield said. Now, this is the answer to that question the PJ asked Kate McCann. What she seen when she first went into the apartment? During her Arguido statement, folks. Here's the answer to it. Bearing in mind that Matthew Oldfield said the curtains were closed at half past nine, and in bearing in mind that the McCanns are telling you that Jane Tanner's sighting was the abductor, folks. Curtains closed at 9.30. Madeline's gone, taken by the abductor. So, the abductor's gone. When the abductor take, took Madeline, the curtains were closed. <laughs> Because Matthew Oldfield went in after the abductor had taken Madeline. According to the McCanns. So at 10 o'clock, Kate McCann does her check. And this is the answer to the question the PG asked. That's why they asked it, because it was the most important question. At around 10 o'clock, Kate McCann went to check on the children. She went into the apartment by the side door, which was closed but not locked, as she said before. She noticed that the children's door, or children's bedroom door, was completely open. The window was open, the shutters were raised, and here's the crux of the matter, folks. The curtains were open. Why, she was certain of having closed them all, as she always did. That's what Kate McCann said she seen when she went into the apartment according to her first statement. She seen a raised shutter, a window open and most importantly the curtains open folks. Yet half an hour earlier Matthew Oldfield seen them closed. Yet Fifteen minutes before Matthew went in, Madeline had gone. So the abductor takes Madeline between 9.05 and 9.15. Matthew goes in at 9.30. Madeline has gone. The curtains are closed. Kate goes in at 10 o'clock. Madeline is gone. At 9.30, the closed, seen by Matthew Oldfield. At 10 o'clock, the curtains are open, seen by Kate McCann. Yet the Madeline, Madeline has supposed to have gone at 9.05, 9.15, taken by the abductor. Again, that's what the McCanns are telling you. Jane Tanner almost caught the abductor. But it does not fit in, does it, folks? It does not fit in with that official Madeleine McCann website, does it? You see, if Madeleine had gone between 9.05 and 9.15, and then Matthew goes in at 9.30 and sees closed curtains, then they can't go from being closed 
at 9.30 to being open seen by Kate. Half an hour later, if Madeline had gone. Now, Kate McCann's statement is backed up by her husband, Jerry, because he's asked, what did you see after the alarm was raised? This is what Jerry McCann tells the detectives in his second statement with regards what he seen after his wife had raised the alarm. Jerry ran to the apartment, accompanied by the rest of the group, who were all seated at the table. When he arrived at the bedroom, he first noticed that the door was completely open. The window was open to one side, the external blinds were fully raised, and here's the crux of the matter again, folks. The curtains were drawn back, which he means were open. Madeline's bed was empty. The, con the twins continued sleeping in their cribs. And here's the crux of the matter again. He clarifies that according to what Kate told him, that was the scene that she'd found when she entered the apartment, folks. So you have two things to take from that. Jerry is telling you that when he entered the apartment after his wife raised the alarm, he noticed the door to the bedroom, the children's bedroom was open, which was obvious because Kate would have opened it. He noticed that the children's bedroom window was open. He noticed that the children's shutter was open and he noticed that the curtains in the children's room were open. Then he tells the detectives that, according to what his wife told him, that's what she seen when she went to do her check, folks. Exactly the same scene as what Jerry described after Kate raised the alarm. So they are both telling you that when the alarm was raised by Kate, and when Jerry ran to the apartment after the alarm was raised, those curtains were open. But they are telling you that Jane Tanner almost caught the abductor between the hours of 9.05 and 9.15. Yet Matthew Oldfield at 9.30 said the curtains were closed, folks, at 9.30. So that's what you've got to ask. If Madeline, according to the McCanns, was taken between 9.05 and 9.15, by the abductor then that he they mean that that abductor has gone so when the abductor had gone with Madeline and then Matthew goes into the apartment at 9.30 Matthew describes closed curtains now Matthew said he didn't notice Madeline had gone because he never looked for Madeline but the most important thing he says was that the curtains were closed. When Madeline had been taken and Matthew did his check at 9.30, according to Matthew Oldfield, the curtains were closed. Then from 9.30 till 10 o'clock, when Kate did a check, the curtains became open folks how is that possible how can they go from being closed at 9.30 to being open at 10 o'clock if Madeline was taken at 9.05 9.15 it means that that person seen by Jane Tanner like the McCanns tell you, was the abductor. Could not have been the abductor, folks, if Madeline was abducted. 
because the abductor, seen by Jane supposedly, would have gone between 9.05 and 9.15. And then when they'd gone, and Matthew did the check after it, the curtains Matthew describes as being closed. And then at 10 o'clock, both Jerry and Kate McCann describe the apartment where curtains are open. That's the scene Kate McCann seen when she went into the apartment. So it means that that person seen by Jane Tanner could not have been the abductor. That's how you prove that that person in the pictures regards to the Madeleine McCann website is not an abductor, folks. It also means that that person, if Madeleine was taken between 9.05 and 9.15 and Matthew sees closed curtains and... Kate sees open curtains at 10 o'clock it means that that person seen by Jane could not have been Tannerman yeah. and they could not have been sorry, Smithman also so they could not be related between the two of them the only way Smithman could be Madeline's abductor is if she was taken between the hours of 21.30 and 10 o'clock. But that's not what the McCanns tell you, is it? The McCanns tell you, as I've shown you, they are not my words, that Jane Tanner almost caught the abductor. So it means they are telling you that Madeline went between the hours of 9.05 and 9.15. Which means that the person in the picture was not Madeline's abductor and the person in the picture could not have been Smithman, so they could not have been related. Because the curtains would not have gone from being closed at 930 being open at 10 o'clock, folks. If Madeline's abductor took her at 9.05, 9.15. Makes you think. <laughs>